Welcome to PodNuts Daily for July 16, 2008. First computer we worked on today was a Dell laptop. And um, I got this laptop from the barber shop who was directly next to my computer repair shop. And this will be the second time I fixed their computer. And then there's a pizza shop two doors down from my computer repair shop, and we already fixed one of their computers. So, um, And then there's a State Farm Insurance guy to the left of my shop, and I fixed two of his computers already. So if you guys do decide to open a shop, make friends with your neighbors because that is definitely business right there. And um, this Dell turned out to be a bit of a nightmare, but here's, here's was the original symptoms. Um, he called me over to the shop in a panic. He needed his computer fixed kind of fast. And here's what he was saying. He, he, uh, every time he booted up his computer, he said it would crash. Now, sometimes it would crash because the window screen with the blue bar that scrolls across, it was, it was full of hair, by the way. Uh, the blue bar on the screen that, that scrolls across, um, that screen would stay, that Windows startup screen. It would just keep going and going and going and going. That would happen sometimes. Sometimes when we boot it into safe mode, it would run for a little bit, and then it would blue screen. Sometimes, in, even in normal mode, it would make it past that original Windows screen and boot up Windows. It would run for a few minutes, and then it would blue screen. Sometimes I couldn't even get the Windows screen to load. So I really had no idea what was wrong with this computer right off the bat. So... What did I do? Well, first he had a password protect. I, I went to. I went, actually wanted to go in the recovery console, and he had a uh, a password protecting an administrator password. You cannot get into the recovery console without the administrator password. So, the boss. It was the boss's computer. Boss wasn't there. He said, "Well, just try to get past the password, however you can." The password he gave me was wrong. So, um, I used a, a program when I, when I need to get past the password. It's called, I think, NT Password Cracker. Let me just look it up on the online real quick. Hang on, guys. I gotta find this. This is a great program. It's free. Uh, I'm gonna look it up right now. Just bear with me for a second. Um, I think this is it. Yeah, it's on. It's on a site called OpenWall.com, but the actual program is. Offline NT password and and registry editor, and I will put the URL in the show notes. But it's at home.eunet.no, and then a couple other things after that. Actually, I'll put it right in the chat. Here's the URL. Now I used to use Offcrack to uh, crack passwords when I needed to. And um, that stopped when, when Vista came out. Offcrack wouldn't work with Vista, so I looked for something else. And this program is Linux-based, and it works with Vista too. So if you need to get past a password or clear out an administrator password, this can do it. So I used that program, um, got past the password, into the recovery console, and let's see, let's see. Actually, I couldn't at that point. It's been a blur of a day, guys. Sorry, I'm going to make you a little out of sequence here, but he had a bad CD drive. It wouldn't even read the CD. So I took it back to the shop. I put in a new CD drive. Then I ran this uh, password cracker, got into the recovery console. I ran check disk slash R um, after running just regular check disk. Ran check disk slash R, same problem. Now, the problem that it was having at this point was system would boot up run for about 10 minutes or so, and then blue screen. And I'm going to tell you the mistake I made in fixing this computer. Um, based on one of the times I tried to boot up his system at the barber shop, the computer said it couldn't recognize the hard drive. So after I saw that, it wasn't even getting into the Windows installation. After I saw that, I figured he needs a new hard drive. After check disk didn't work, Check this slash R didn't work. Um, I actually did a Windows repair. And Windows repair did the same thing. Once it got to a certain point, it, Windows repair went all the way through fine. But then when I booted up the system, after it ran for 10 or 15 minutes, it would blue screen. So at that point, I figured it was the hard drive. Because a Windows repair can fix almost anything. Um, 
so that's what I did. I thought I needed a hard. We went out and bought a hard drive, and I used a Cronus True Image to clone the old hard drive into the new hard drive, thinking that if the hardware was bad, then that wouldn't be transferred over into the new image that we created. If the drive had errors, um, win- software errors, that would be transferred over into the new image. But I thought it was a hardware problem, not a software problem. So that's why I cloned it to a new drive, figuring the new drive was a nice, fresh piece of hardware. Um, the operating system, I thought, was okay on his old drive, so I put it over to the new drive. Started up the computer. We ran it for about 10 minutes. It blue screened. At this point, I actually read the blue screen, whereas before, I didn't even read it. And that was just dumb. Um, the error was IRQ not less than equal. That was the, the main error at the top of the blue screen, which I did read the first couple times it happened. And I thought that was usually a memory error, but we replaced the memory and it was still happening. So it wasn't a RAM issue, which I thought that would have been a RAM issue. So I didn't read the rest of the blue screen. Well, I should have because at the bottom of the rest of the blue screen, it named the specific driver that was causing a problem. And it was, had to do with the wireless adapter. So I uninstalled the wireless adapter drivers reinstalled them, and the computer stopped blue screening. Um, I still kept the new hard drive in because the old one, when we did the Acronis uh, clone, it did encounter some errors on the old hard drive. The computer's kind of old. It was an uh, Inspiron 5100, so the hard drive, I think, was a little flaky anyway. So um, we did keep the new hard drive in and, um, and sell the new hard drive to the customer. Um, but lesson learned, read the blue screens. If you're getting blue screens of death, read them completely. It might tell you exactly where the problem is, and then you could act accordingly. Okay. Um, I just want to say also, I've had several computers that just act crazy when the wireless card, the internal wireless card goes bad or gets out of um, dislodged a little bit. Um, I've had computers that wouldn't boot at all, um, that wouldn't even post if the wireless card is out. So, oh, I, one, of the, one of the things I'm going to start doing now is when I encounter these crazy problems with um, where I think it's a motherboard or something like that, I take out the wireless cards. One of the first things I do, and sometimes that fixes the problem. We got lucky with a Think, not lucky, but we learned that way with a ThinkPad that we spent hours and hours on. It turned out just to be the wireless card. Mitch, I'm sorry I'm breaking up, um, but the uh, Ustream recording is happening, so you can watch whatever you miss on the way, uh, you know, later today if you need to. <laughs> But uh, I don't think anyone else is having a problem, so I'm just going to keep going. Second computer I want to talk about was a computer I also tried to clone yesterday with a Cronus True Image. Um, the cloning process said it would take 20 hours after we started it, and it was just dragging along. And it, what it meant was that this hard drive definitely had errors that we were trying to clone. In fact, it was just, it, it didn't even make it all the way through. 